morning lovelies. Surprise, I'm pregnant. Before I tell you about all the things that helped me survive the first trimester, thank goodness, I just want to say that I'm so grateful to be pregnant. I know it's a hard topic for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. If you're trying to get pregnant, my prayers go out to you. If you are pregnant, maybe some of these things will help you out. The first thing that helped me the most to survive my first trimester was being able to delegate a lot of my household tasks. At the end of the day, the first trimester sucks. I felt so sick and so tired, and I basically had half the amount of energy that I normally do, which meant I could do half of the chores that I normally do. So delegating some tasks was key. Luckily for me, my husband works from home, so he was able to take over a lot of stuff. Right when I got pregnant we kind of went through our chore lists and figured out what he could do more of and what I could do less of. He was a big help but if I didn't have him or if he didn't work from home I would definitely consider asking friends or family to come over to help or I would love to try hiring out meal or housekeeping services. In fact the next time I try to get pregnant I was just thinking about this. I want to like budget out cleaning services just for a few months because that sounds so luxurious and nice. That was definitely the hardest thing for me to keep up on. The next thing that helped me the most was giving my toddler as much independence as possible. This is actually something we've been working on all year. I've read so many books about it and I have a lot of ideas for how to implement, but one of the main things that helped was just to set up our house in a way that allows her the freedom to do whatever she needs she has snacks within reach and water within reach she's potty trained it's got her toys within reach and possibly the best thing we have is a bunch of stools around her house they're all lightweight so she can pick them up and carry them to wherever she needs she uses them everywhere all the time she can totally do it on her own she loves being independent and it's cool that we've been able to give her so much freedom and agency obviously she's a toddler and there's a lot of stuff she still can't do but I'm so grateful for every single thing I set up in her house to give her a little bit more freedom and take a little bit less off of my plate. Okay, I'm starving. Let's go make breakfast. I'm so excited we're making eggs today. I haven't had eggs for months because they were like really not good for me for a minute. Let's go. Is it yummy or yucky? Yummy, yucky. It's both? Oh, dang. She okay. is so fast. The grape? Mm. The next thing that helped me the most was having the right medication. I'm so grateful for my doctor this time around. I made it really clear that there are a lot of medications to help with first trimester nausea and he encouraged me to contact him if the ones I was using weren't working which I did and once I got new medication I was a new woman I felt so amazing to be able to do normal things like go to the park and the library in my first pregnancy I had no idea that there were so many medications out there next time I just want to get the right medication as quickly as possible so I can feel much better as soon as possible the next thing that helped me out was eating constantly pretty much every time I had something in my mouth I felt a lot better and by the end of my first trimester I realized it didn't really matter what I was eating as long as I was eating something. By the end, I switched out my chips for like vegetables, and then I felt a lot better about what I was eating. <laughs> Definitely, I'm a proponent of treat yourself. 
But if I had known that it didn't matter what food I was eating, as long as I was munching on something, I would have gotten my daily vegetable intake every single day, probably. <laughs> now I know for next time. Something really fun that helped me survive and even thrive in my first trimester was celebrating every week. There are so many ways people can document their pregnancy, fun pictures or a little diary. I decided to take a picture every week next to the fruit that was the same size as my baby that week. And it was so fun for me to have a creative project. So fun to look forward to that growth every week, even when I wasn't seeing a lot of growth on my body. It's just a cool reminder how much is happening inside of me. That was a really fun project that I think really helped me to have a good mindset and be very grateful and excited, even when I was feeling so horrible. <laughs> okay, let's clean this stuff up. Just a few more things that really helped me to not only survive, but also thrive in my first trimester. As a stay-at-home mom with a toddler, which is just a lot, I started working on cultivating a restful mindset, giving myself permission to have a very slow winter season. This quote from Josephine Rathborn really resonates with me. It says, if we could learn how to balance rest against effort, calmness against strain, quiet against turmoil, we would assure ourselves of joy in living and psychological health for life. That really stood out to me because I think at the beginning of my first trimester, I wasn't really feeling psychological health. I was starting to beat myself up for everything that I wasn't able to do. I was feeling really frustrated with how my lack of energy was affecting my home and the people around me. I really wanted to do the most and have every season be full of hustle and bustle and grind and hard work. But I know that would lead me towards psychological doom, commonly known as burnout. Things really started to change when I decided to let that go and just take it slow and let my body rest, let my home rest, let things slow down and get behind. Once I gave myself permission to rest and nap while my toddler napped and lay on the couch for most of the day, I started to feel like in sync with what my body wanted me to do. I was able to appreciate the quiet and feel really rested. That mindset change allowed me to minimize my to-do list. I had to get very real and honest with myself. If only half of my normal energy every day, what was I going to prioritize? In the end, I picked parenting and yeah, that's about it. Everything else I kind of let go. I stopped going to the gym, I didn't clean the house as much. I didn't cook very much or very well. I declined a lot of social events and really took it slow and easy on as much as I possibly could. Instead, I focused on letting my body rest and taking care of my toddler the best that I could. And one of the biggest things that helped me in that season was having a manageable home, which is something I've been working on since we moved in earlier this year. This book has helped me to create a very intentional, minimal, but beautiful home. I've read this so many times. It's basically just this very helpful guide for creating a home that is intentionally put together and very organized. It has everything that you need, but nothing more. And that makes it really easy to clean up quickly and spend less time cleaning because everything has a home. It has a guide to how to think about your stuff in a better way, in a more intentional way. And then it kind of goes through every room in your house and really questions like, how many water bottles do you really need? If there's only three people living in your house, you probably only need three water bottles, right? Looking through it, it's clear that I need to review it again because <laughs> over time, I think we just easily collect clutter and it's hard to remember to declutter at the same time. 
but when I do, my house is way more manageable and easy to clean, even while I am unwell in my first trimester. <laughs> first trimester can be super brutal. I found it easier once I asked for help, let go of the expectations of getting everything done, and gave myself permission to rest and have a slow season. The funny thing is, once I got to my second trimester, I felt really rested and like my cup was full and I was so eager and ready to jump into my second trimester, full of energy. I deep cleaned the whole house in the first week. I'm not even kidding. I was just so pumped and excited to get a move on. I don't think I would have had the energy to do that if I had been trying to force myself to keep up with all the demands in my first trimester. And what perfect timing for me to be hitting my stride and having more energy than leading into the new year. I'm so looking forward to the holidays, but also the new year to be able to start some new goals and start fresh. I'm currently reading Atomic Habits as I brainstorm my goals for next year. So stay tuned for the next video where I'll share my 2024 mom goals with you. Don't forget that you are loved. Mwah. Ugh.